Well, hello there, everyone, and welcome to episode number 113 of GoRainbowRadio.com. I am your host, Tim Coramal, once again coming to you from the fabulous neighborhood of Logan Circle here in Washington, D.C. And Go Rainbow Radio is sponsored by Cap Records. Be sure to check out my sponsor over at CapRecords.com, that's C-A-P-P Records.com. You can also check out their MySpace page over at MySpace.com slash Cap Records. Well, everyone, this is your show for Sunday, August 10th, 2008, and my guest on the show this week is, once again, Gaz Reynolds. Gaz joined us on episode 53 quite some time ago, and he's back to tell us about some of the artists that he is now featuring on his label, World Domination Records. So we're going to start out the interview by hearing his song, Some Forgive, the Starlet DJ Radio Edit, and Gaz will be joining us right after this. Some forgive, but I can never forget. Take my love, but I'll with regret. Gaz Reynolds, Some Forgive, the Starlet DJ Radio Edit, and I'm joined today with Gaz, not in the studio, but on the line from the UK. How you doing, Gaz? Hi, Tim. It's uh, very kind of you to have me back on the show, and I'm doing very well, thank you. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. You were originally on episode 53, and this is episode 113, so that was some time wow. ago. <laughs> it certainly was. Wow. <laughs> so yeah, so it's great having you back. It's great having you back. And it's great to be back. So let's talk a little bit about your uh, your music. When you were originally on the show, we talked all, all about your music, but you also, and we did talk a little bit about the fact that you run a record label called World Domination Records. So what we're going to do today is we are going to focus on your label and uh, play some of the music from some of the artists you have on your label. And uh, so why don't you just tell us all, all about that? Right. Well, no, that's um, World Domination Records um, started back ooh, a few years back. And initially, I set the label up just so that I had, you know, total control over my own music and a forum, you know, a, an outlet to release. And then the next stage of it 
in my head was that I was going to have a select few artists on the label and see how it all went. And I didn't realise what a major challenge I'd taken on. But uh, a couple of years down the line, I can say that I've um, learned an awful lot about the music industry and how tough it is, but also how exciting and interesting it is. And World Domination Records, or WDR as it's more commonly known now, has uh, signed artists from pretty much all around the world. Oh, cool. <laughs> um, we've got artists from America, UK, Australia, because you had Greg from Bleeding Brain Music Inc. on a few weeks back on your show. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've just signed some artists from Russia, uh, Sweden, Norway, and uh, we're in negotiations with an act from Japan at the moment. So it's quite exciting times. And uh, we've got worldwide distribution. We mainly focus on the digital side of things, but we do do CD releases as well. But as we all know, CD releases are very much on the decline now, unfortunately. Yeah, it's very so, true. Yeah, it's a shame because we all love CDs, but it seems like everybody wants to get onto iTunes and eMusic and uh, Amazon.com have just jumped on, on the bandwagon now and they're doing digital downloads and uh, LimeWire now has uh, a digital store so they're not doing all the file sharing like they were doing before but now they're actually selling legal MP3s. So um, so we're, we're very much focusing on, on that side of things and I think a lot of people initially thought that we were just a dance label and whilst the main genre of music is actually uh, dance. We do also sign pop, a um, bit of rock, alternative, and uh, we're always open-minded. So uh, the whole idea of WDR is to um, bring something new and fresh to the music market, and hopefully we do that well. Well, you know, it's very interesting because we were, you were just talking about the whole CD versus electronic downloads. To be honest with you, I mean, I've had an iPod since the very original iPod. Gosh, when did those come out? Was that 1998? I think, I think so. that's when the first iPod came out. And uh, I remember I was I was so excited. I, I had five. What was the original one? It was five gigs? I think. And uh, I was just so excited that I had this thing. And and then <laughs> iTunes came along, and you could download. You know, or, or actually, you had to load all your music by CDs back then. That was before the iTunes Music Store even came around. But you know what, what I find is ever since then is if I buy a CD or if someone gives me a CD, I stick it in the drive once to import it into iTunes and then it goes on the shelf. <laughs> so realistically, uh, you know, it's uh, it's kind of better off that uh, they're selling, you know, things electronically now, at least from you know, from the environmental standpoint, the clutter yeah, standpoint I, and I, everything. I, I think so. And, I, and, and the thing is now... You can download pop videos, and now it's moved on to movies as well. And, um, you know, every time I'm out, uh, you don't see people playing CDs on their Walkman anymore. You see them with their iPod. Absolutely. And, through the tracks. So, and now iPhones and everything else. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, I mean, you know, the whole thing's moved on from when I released my first CD. I, I, I can remember thinking, wow, this is really exciting. But now... You know, I get excited about the next digital release that's coming out because, you know, that's the way forward. Absolutely, absolutely. Now tell us some about some of the bands that you have with uh, World Domination Records. Well, we've got um, an interesting variety of acts. And, and um, I think, like I said, originally we kind of started off more on the dance side of things. And we still very much do focus on dance material and dance acts. But we have also taken on uh, projects from artists that would be leaning more towards pop or alternative. And uh, so sometimes it even surprises us. The ones that we think are going to be really, really popular and commercial and the ones that we think are going to be more kind of underground or low-key, quite often <laughs> those ones can surprise us because of the digital market and because you're sharing basically with the world um, through the digital market, you're giving music fans a choice and quite often some of the uh, material that we think wouldn't be as popular is actually as popular, if not more popular. So so we've, we've really got a, a whole variety of acts. We've just signed uh, 
Tropical Rush uh, exhortation project from Russia and uh, one of my top favourites at the moment, which is Hyperforce. So that's more on the dance side of things than with, I think you had Isaac Angel on some time back. Um, he does more dance, pop material. And uh, we've also got um, a great album called Break Free, produced by Matt Spedderford, by an artist called Kate Somerset Howe. Well, speaking of Hyperforce, why don't we play Tetris Reborn, the original edit 2008, and uh, we will be back right after this. Tetris Reborn. And that was Hyperforce, Tetris Reborn, the original edit 2008, and I'm joined back with Gaz. Now, Gaz, why don't you tell us about uh, who Hyperforce is? Well, Hyperforce is uh, one individual um, who's based in Norway, and he's only 16. Oh, really? Um, Yeah, and uh, he writes and produces all his own material. And I have to say that when we were doing the relaunch of WDR, I don't know, a year or two back, he had approached us then, but we'd already taken on our quota of artists for that period. Um, but in the back of my head, he was still there. And um, so I think he was probably 14 or 15 when he originally approached us. 
So even then, <laughs> he had an except what I class as an exceptional talent. So now we signed him, and he's already got his first release out. And uh, I'm very impressed with his dedication, and um, I think he's got a very very bright recording career ahead of him. Oh, that's that's just very cool. 16 years old. Gosh, I mean, 16. I wouldn't think I was doing anything uh, useful. <laughs> you know, uh, it's amazing. Uh, I think since I actually started World Domination Records, I've I've been really, really overwhelmed and amazed at the the talent that we've had approach the label, um, and it's literally coming from around the world. I mean, we've actually we've just recently signed acts from Sweden and Russia. We're in negotiations with another act from Japan, and of course we, we've got Bleeding Brain Music Inc. from Australia, who, who we had on your show a few weeks back. So, yeah, um, we, you know, we certainly got a, a, an interesting bunch of artists from all around the world, and that's really what WDR is all about. It's sometimes signing an act that might appear to be a little bit different or off the wall. Um, and then other artists that uh, are very mainstream commercial but bring something new and fresh into the music market. Oh, cool. Now, now, uh, how long have you actually been running World Domination Records? Uh, sometimes I think too long. <laughs> 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 and Because uh, sometimes it can be very me mentally draining, and I, I think people, particularly artists, I think they tend to think that they have a record out and they're going to be a multi-millionaire overnight, and it really doesn't work like that. No, um, yeah. <laughs> Just like I'm going to become a multimillionaire from doing this podcast, right? <laughs> well, you never know. You see, the, the thing is, you really don't know what's going to happen, at, you know, especially with technology and the way you can reach out to the world now, but but you really don't know what's, what's going to happen. Behind the scenes, I think being an artist myself, a recording artist, and then running this label as well, I didn't realize initially what a major challenge I'd taken taken on uh, but now I've learned from my experiences and uh, and I've learned how to, you know, prioritize things and uh, also have my chill out days, which is completely away from music. And um, but yeah, it's, it's a big challenge. Uh, um, it, it was enormous at the beginning and uh, uh, it's great fun. I love it. And um, I think to answer your question, it was around about the end of 2003 that I initially started WBR and it was initially just to promote my own music and then 2005 or no 2006 sorry um, well, I'd got to the stage of signing acts and um, I by then got a worldwide distribution deal and I was getting into talks with radio stations and TV stations and magazines and all kinds of things so um, so the, all the doors started opening up and um, I'm in talks with a very very big company in america who market cds and blah 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 i won't mention their name at the moment because the deal is not done and dusted but um if that all comes off then uh, i think people will be going wow well, cool. Working with those guys. <laughs> cool well well that's about five years i guess you've been in doing this on the label so that's very cool and uh... yeah i did actually have a label before that um but it was very very uh low-key underground with no distribution so uh, this is something completely different. This is worldwide distribution, and, and we mainly focus on the digital side of things. So that's really opened up an awful lot of doors, and and the, and the distributor is really good and is very helpful with promotion and stuff as well. So so it's all looking very very positive and and bright, and so uh, fingers crossed. But I haven't got a jet yet, and I think a lot of people think maybe I have. So. That's really cool. Now let's play um let's play another song from your label. You mentioned Kate Somerset Howe. We're yeah. going to play uh, I Only Hear You and uh, we can talk about her when we come back. So okay. So this is Kate Somerset Howe. I Only Hear You and we'll be back with you right after this. Oh, 
was Kate Somerset Howe, I Only Hear You, and uh, guys, tell us tell us about Kate Somerset Howe. Okay, well, um, that track's actually from her debut album called Break Free, which is produced by a friend of mine called Matt Steadiford, and um, Matt occasionally does remixes for us for the label for various artists, um, but that was his actual project, he wrote and produced the whole album, and... Kate has funded the project, and uh, I think it's actually absolutely a fantastic album. Cool. Now, um, how how long has she been with your label? I think that whole project came about about a year ago, but Matt already had actually uh, recorded the whole album a year before that, so it's probably two years old. So that gives you some idea also of how sometimes some projects can be recorded, canned, Nothing happens with it, and then all of a sudden something happens with it. Um, yeah, it's very true. It's very true. I've, that's one of the things I've learned about the music industry is it's really surprising. You know, a song that's been out for two years is all of a sudden hitting the charts, you know? <laughs> that's it. That's it. And that's why I was saying to you, you never, ever know what's actually going to happen around the corner. You know, you, you I, I've seen artists from WDR end up on um, major television networks and DVD compilations and all kinds of stuff which we really didn't expect at the time. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's very cool. That's very cool. Now, um, where can people go to buy the music from World Domination Records? Okay, well, you can head over to our website, which is www.worlddominationrecords.com. We have got a whole load of links there. We try and make it as easy as possible for you know fans to just basically go straight in and, and purchase. All our releases are on iTunes, Amazon.com, eMusic, um, LimeWire. I think we're going on to Seven Digital soon. But you can also Google the artists, and usually you get a, get pagefuls of of links and and stuff. So, um, but yeah, pretty much all the the major retailers. Are you on the uh, worldwide iTunes store, or just pretty much the UK one? Or uh... no, it's actually quite interesting because when I was out. In Australia, I actually um, did actually go on to the Australian iTunes and all the releases, it's strange because I was quite surprised at this, the releases come up in a different order because you, you usually have like pop- popularity, you know, top five or whatever in, in the right hand corner and the sales are different over in Australia and the pages look slightly different 
and it was the same when I was actually in India as well. I can't remember if it was iTunes India or whatever it was that I clicked onto, but we are on all of them. So I think a lot of people don't realise that iTunes has got many stores. Uh, you've got iTunes.com, you've got the UK version, the Netherlands version, the Japanese version, the Australian version. <laughs> so we are actually on all of them. Yeah, and what's very interesting about it is, is that each one is a separate server, and they are while they're connected, they're not really that connected. Um, a lot of people have talked about on different podcasts. If you go into the UK iTunes store and leave a review on a song or a podcast or something like that, it will only show up in that country. It won't show up in the other countries' uh, reviews. So, yeah, and I, I think this is something that a lot of our artists hadn't realised that they thought they were just going to be on iTunes dot com, but um, if you go onto iTunes Netherlands or whatever, and it comes up in in that language as well. Absolutely, but, yeah. Uh, so, there you go. Modern technology, Tim. Yeah, so cool. So, so Gaz, I want to thank you for coming on the show today. Okay, thank you. Why don't you tell people how they can contact you? Okay, well, um, like I said, you can head over to the World Domination Records website, which is www.worlddominationrecords.com. You can check out all of our artists there. They've all got their own artist pages and um, one or two tracks featured on their, their pages that you can listen to. And then there's all links that you can click through to to purchase and stuff. Well, cool, cool. This is Tim Cormall. You are listening to episode 113 of Go Rainbow Radio. And um, you can always check us out over at the at uh, GoRainbowRadio.com. You can call the listener line at 202-657-4277 or just send me an email at Tim Cormall. That's C-O-R-R-I-M-A-L at gmail.com. And if you just go to GoRainbowRadio.com, we have the links to all of the various um, social networking sites from MySpace to Twitter to Frapper to Flickr, all that stuff. So, uh so definitely come on over and check us out. And thank you for listening to Go Rainbow Radio. And uh, Gaz, thank you for again for coming on. And thanks again, Tim, for having me back. And uh, thanks to everyone that has uh, supported WDR and also my own um, career over the years. We're going to close up the show with the song Tropical Rush, uh, the Pump This Party original mix. And uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about Tropical Rush? Well, uh, Tropical Rush are two guys. Uh, they're both 18 and based in Sweden. And they write and produce all their own material. Um, I absolutely love them. And uh, I believe you're going to play one of their tracks right now. Yeah, so this is Pump This Party, the original mix by Tropical Rush. And we've been joined by Gaz Reynolds from World Domination Records. And we will see you all next time. <laughs>
sponsored by Cap Records, the division of Cap Company.